Welcome to the Exponential Marketing Club, where we talk about everything content marketing, from just getting started with your business, to growing a captivating presence with your website and social media, and on to scaling with Facebook and Instagram advertising for exponential exposure and long-term success. Hi, my name is Sally Hendrick, your host and exponential marketing strategist. Let's get started, y'all. Hi, Marilyn. How are you doing? This is uh, Sally Hendrick here. What's going on? Hey, Sally. Marilyn Dollar here. I'm just uh, hanging out with you today. Yeah, this is cool. So we are on Clubhouse, which is a really cool app that um, I believe is still only available for iPhone users. And we feel like oh, all of our Android friends are left out. So what I've done is I've pulled this talk together for us to chat about content to get you noticed in your career or your business uh, or your industry, you know, all of those things, and then put this on podcast episode, on a video, so other people can enjoy uh, the content as well. And I also will have this for the Hearing Challenged. It will have closed captions on the video uh, option for this, so be sure to check that out. And uh, let's get started. How about that? Love it. You know, I think Clubhouse is available on Android now. Oh, is it? I think it literally this week. You know, it's I saw finally. Rumblings. I saw rumblings about that. Somebody was talking about it was either I don't know what room I was in now, but they were saying it's finally. I think the beta has been has been released. You know how when we first got started, right. it was the Clubhouse beta for the iPhone. But I think they just launched the the beta for Android this week. Excellent, excellent. So that's so it's cool coming. News. Yeah, that's yeah. Cool news, awesome. Okay, so before I introduce myself, I would love for you, Marilyn, to introduce yourself. But I do want to tell a slight little story before we do that. Uh, Marilyn and I actually met online somehow through maybe Des Stevens. Was that right? Or was it yeah, another way? Yeah. Yeah, through Des. Through Des. Okay. So we met that somehow like that. And then Marilyn was coming to Nashville for an event. And I was also working um, on some things around that event. And we actually met in person because I had people over. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. You had a, you had some kind of um, like an open house or something. It was so magical because what you guys don't know is Sally lives in Nashville, in downtown Nashville, which nobody lives downtown, <laughs> and she lives in a high rise with a rooftop deck that is absolutely amazing. And it was magical. I met the most interesting people. I, I had a great time. And you've got a, such a cool place, Sally. Thank you. But I do want to correct one thing. This is not actually a high rise. This is one of the historical buildings that was converted into condos. And we do live on the top floor, but it's only five floors. It felt like a high rise. Yeah. I know, but it was you could see everything in downtown. Well, yeah, yeah. We're in the historic district, and so there's limits on how tall the buildings can be right in front of us. And so it makes the appearance that we're up higher than we really are, <laughs> which is kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. So That is pretty cool. I like that. Speaking of networking and events, that can uh, be one of the ways that we can... Um, get our content out there, if you will, because you network with people, they start following you, they start, um, you know, they know who you are, you're greeting people all the time like that, but it, it's very limited. And developing relationships like that in person can take a really long time. And so what I wanted to do with this chat was to actually go into how, what are the some of what are some of the amazing digi digital ways that we can uh, connect with people um, and what type of content would we need to use to help promote us in our own companies, promote us in our industries, and also promote our own businesses. And the funny thing is, is that you really work with women who were in the career space over on 
you know, like the corporate side of things and trying to get promotions. I work with people who are having their own businesses typically, but I've always seen this relationship between the two that is not necessarily being utilized as much on the career side of things. So tell me a little bit more about what you do to help women in the career space, and then we can figure out some ways to digitize this to make it uh, more amplified. Yeah, so it's a great question, Sally. There's a lot of different ways that you can amplify your yourself, your message, and it's something that uh, I've learned from my own coach in that women especially need help with their self-confidence in all aspects of that. So when I when I say self-confidence, I don't mean you, should, you rock up and you're like, I'm the best in the world. What I mean is you intrinsically know that you can solve problems and that you carry that with you all the time. And, and when I say you need to figure out your brand, if you will, I have a friend on, on LinkedIn. Her name is Megan Lujan, and she is a master at rebranding. And one of the things that she says is, go get a professional photo shoot. You don't have to be an influencer, but you do need to show up in a professional, polished way. You can still have fun, but invest some time and some energy in what your digital profile looks like. And that could be, uh, do you stand for something? Do you stand for being a mother? Do you stand for other women? Uh, Are there power colors that could lend themselves uh, to you on that? She has a whole um, branding book, if you will, on her website. I think it's $9. And she takes you through how to set up a photo shoot to spruce up your LinkedIn profile, your Instagram profile, even your Facebook profile. Mm -hmm. Because if you're going to look for work, be that as an entrepreneur or as a corporate citizen, they look at your social media profiles now. Uh, it's, absolutely, it's, they do. Yeah. It's really, it's, it's a big part of background investigation. Will you be a good fit for the, the corporate world? Mm-hmm. Even if you're going to work with a new client, a lot of times, if I'm going to work with a virtual assistant or another coach, I'll go and see what their social media profiles look like and what do they believe in and do we believe in the same thing. I'm a, I'm a big proponent of women in the workplace and global um, p- profiles for lots of different reasons. When I go to a meeting, I don't want to just see one or two types of people. I want to see a lot of different people from a lot of different places in the world because I don't want to just have my viewpoint. Mm -hmm. I want to have more representation for other areas of the world. And you just, we struggle with that sometimes in the U.S. It's one of the reasons why I settled in Chicago because I wanted my kids to grow up not in a homogenized neighborhood, but in a global melting pot. And that's what I feel like living in the city of Chicago is. I love that, and I 100% agree with you, and as much as we can do that within Nashville, that's probably why we ventured as the first pioneering family to (laughs) come into Nashville and try to create a space for our kids, go to public school, do the things that... um, that we could do to integrate into this community as much as possible. And so I love that you said that about bringing this uh, diversity and representation from what life really looks like. Yeah. I mean, we live in a global economy now. You know, the Internet is all over the world. And I had tried to explain to my kids, you know, the people in Chicago aren't just seeing that that people in South Africa are seeing that Mm -hmm. people in France are seeing that maybe people in China aren't seeing that because they don't have the same social media platforms we do, but that that's not going to be forever. It really is global. And we have to start thinking like global citizens. I know we, we live in the U S but that's not the way that 
the world is anymore. It's a global economy. And you can see just from the pandemic in the last year, it's a global city that we all live in now. Yes. And and it's, speaking of the pandemic right now, I mean, I know that a lot of people are feeling more comfortable about things because the numbers are down in the U.S. compared to where they were a few months ago. However, yeah. because of the situation that's happening in India, I wake up yeah. at night. I still wake up at night. Yep. I, I mean, I did a project last year with a team in India, and when they had to transition to working from home, I'll tell you something. It wasn't a great situation for everyone on my team. Mm -hmm. They don't have the same kind of infrastructure that we have here. They depend on going to work for a lot of different reasons. And when I see that, I have a picture in my office that one of my team members brought me from, uh, where was he from? Bangladesh, maybe. And it has an elephant, a horse, and a camel. And they are the three harbingers of wealth, health, and happiness, I think. Mm -hmm. and, and I think of how much they must be affected by the numbers continuing to rise, how many of their family members have been affected by this. Yeah. And... It's terrifying. You know, they're having two to three million cases a week right now. I just can't even fathom that, Sally. I know you're a numbers girl, yeah. so I, I know that's your jam. And I loved it when the pandemic first hit and you were talking about, statistically speaking, y'all. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was very good. It's very good. You. Thank you. I, I got a little obsessed with that in the beginning. And, um, and I, uh -huh. still kept, I still keep up with it all the time. But it was affecting me emotionally and in my business. And I was like, you know what? I've got to turn this into some sort of connection with people based on what I've always wanted to do, which is to connect with people uh, from my passions, from my platform, if you will. So I love the fact that we've actually tar started talking in this direction because my goal in life, I mean, it's like I grew up wanting to be a war reporter in some strange country far away hiding behind a column and reporting what was going on around the corner and, and for me to be able to actually do that in my business and my nonprofit is something that I'm aspiring to and I, I really think that I've set myself up to know how to amplify my message because I do run a social media marketing and Facebook advertising business. Isn't that crazy? It's crazy. But that's what you get to do. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's, you know, the things that get you noticed online are, I think, when you're providing value. Mm -hmm. And I think you do that so well, Sally, just in your everyday life. The things that you post are super valuable and you're always serving and leading and you just have it on repeat. And that's really what starts to build your brand consistency and integrity and yes. your leadership style and the messaging and not being afraid to say uh -huh. something that doesn't necessarily go along with the uh the regular messaging that you hear I, i've never been you know somebody to ride the train uh with everybody else i've always been the one going against the grain finding something different hanging off the end of the caboose and reporting on what's happening on the street you know on the roads that we're passing by <laughs> i've always been that type of person and so that's the type of thing i want to inspire in business and in careers and, and everything because right now what's happening is there's like this huge backlash against this whole corporation thing going on. And I think yep. what's happening is that corporations need to realize your employees are not just a cog in the wheel. Your employees yep. are real people who need to be heard. They need to be utilized. And the culture of that entrepreneurial spirit is lost if you yep. do not connect with people and allow them to bring themselves to the forefront and create this individual personal branding style to create a company culture. Yeah, it's totally true. And so while we're on this topic, I'm glad you brought it up because 
I was at my husband's dad's house last weekend, and he's he's a big news watcher. And this this guy came on talking about these woke corporations and how you know we're going to ban them or we're going to boycott them. Can you speak a little bit about that? I mean, what is your take on that? Okay, so are you talking about corporations that are waking up to the inconsistencies and lack of the way diversity? they do business? Right. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Yeah. And and as far as waking up, it, the whole world needs to open their eyes and look at what's going on on the other side of the tree, uh-huh. the back side of the tree the interior Uh part of the forest, when you're walking on your pretty path with the concrete or the uh, wood chips or whatever that are all laid out so perfectly and that's where you live in life, but you're ignoring something happening that's, uh, that's diseased on the other side just outside of your peripheral view, Uh you're missing. You're missing the world. Now, As far as like the corporate style of that, if people do not bring forth what's really happening in the world, which it's been exposed with social media, there's no way of getting around it. And if corporations do not respond to what's happening on the ground and through social media in the cloud, then the corporations are going to look like the enemy. Um. And so if you've got traditionalists who are saying oh these you know we need to boycott this or we need to stop this or we need to fight against this and not allow the people to speak then they're going to create a revolution yeah and it's been interesting just interesting to see and follow it a little bit in the news i i wasn't expecting that as an outcome from covid but it kind of has been i was seeing it very much so, and um, yeah, it, it's been a difficult year because I have to say that, you know, normally I'm one of these, I just literally get on a plane and I go to Europe or I go to Australia or I go to somewhere in the world or India or wherever, and I go, Same. and when I go, I go for a month. I don't go for like, you know, a preset tour that shows me all the pretty parts. I venture off into the real life, and I try to learn the language. I try to, you know, communicate with people and really find out what life is like. And Uh because of that, I feel like my viewpoint and perspective is much more from a satellite view. Uh But also from down on the ground in the middle of everything. So Uh being able to bring both of those together, I feel like is something, I feel like that that, that's what's happening. You know what I mean? Like what you're saying Uh about corporations coming in and responding to what's happening, they have to. If they don't, they're going to be, they're going to be gone. Yeah. Yeah. And, And that's, you know, consumer power. I mean, if you think about if anything, what the global economy has woken up to during COVID is that we're all connected. Yeah, we are. And there's this one thing that's tying us all together and you can't escape it and you can't isolate it and compartmentalize it and put it in a box and throw it away. You have to acknowledge it. Yeah. Yeah. It's been really cool to see that actually. That's Mm -hmm. that's probably my most favorite thing. I love that. It's the dirty but I know. secret in everybody's closet, and you can't hide it anymore. <laughs> right, right. I know we're we're kind of getting a little bit off topic, but yeah, I just uh, I love yeah. your take on things like that. It's yes, fascinating. Well, why don't we let's do this real quick? I would love to bring Gracie up because Gracie is an expert in LinkedIn. Gracie, if you're available and ready, please hit the raise your, you know, raise your hand or whatever and I'll bring you up. If you're not, we'll just keep talking. Um, but I want to go into what what can happen with people with their social media profiles, with their LinkedIn, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Most corporate employees, women in the workplace, they typically don't 
have their own blog necessarily. Some of right. them do. Some of them do. But when it comes to putting yourself out there, your social media, like we said before, is really super important. And there are ways to amplify that to get yourself noticed so that when your resume hits somebody's desk, when it's time for, uh, you know, selecting a new person in a job, like for some sort of, you know, career change or, uh, um, or some sort of job promotion, you're going to stand out a lot more if you've been visible. And if your personality and your values and your platform or whatever it may be that you put out there, your skill set, your confidence and boldness and authority of topic, if that is known and then your resume hits somebody's desk, guess what's going to happen? You're going to get the job. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the new way of making that phone call to say, Hey, I've got a friend who sent you a resume. It's in that stack you've got of 250 resumes. Uh, if you would pull that out and take a look, you know how that it was the way in the past? Yeah. And it's still the way now. And it's even harder now because it's harder to know. It's harder to know how to make those connections, you know, uh, when you've got 500 people applying for the same job. Uh, yeah. the, the job of re of a recruiter or a human resources person is is uh, much more. Uh, let's just say that it's a it's a lot noisier these days, and so being able to understand how to rise to the top is a whole new thing. Totally a whole new thing. I agree with you on that. Yeah. So what I wanted to do is I want to go into. The types of things that you can do if you don't have your own business with your own website and all of that, what you can do is actually um, start writing articles, opinions, whatever you're doing is really loud. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, was that me or Gracie? I think it's you because it's something rustling. <laughs> sorry, Sally. It's How about okay. now? Better? Yeah, yeah, I don't hear it now. Um, okay. Okay, so, so what I want to go into is that um, the content that you can be putting out there. You know, back when I was in corporate, if you got an article published in an industry magazine, uh, it was really cool, right? And But that was okay. something that always felt kind of... Um, you know, it felt like very exclusive. It felt like you needed to already have that job before you could contribute. Uh -huh. But these days, you can contribute right there on your LinkedIn profile, in the news feed, etc. And you can be doing commentary. You can be writing your own opinion. You can be doing, you know, whatever that may be um, to put yourself out there on your LinkedIn profile. Now, I wanted to welcome Gracie. Hey, Gracie, how are you doing? Hi, Sally. Thank you for having me here. You're welcome. I'm so glad that you decided to join us because I think that this conversation is perfect for you to pipe in whenever you have um, something that maybe triggers, you know, what you're doing with people. Would you tell us a little bit more about some of the things you help people with with LinkedIn? I... I help them to optimize their profile because a lot of people just have them like um, a resume mm -hmm. or, and that speaks in third person and they most of them that have um, avoided or put LinkedIn aside, they haven't updated their profile in 10 years. So now they're in, in different in a different job, different career, different business. And they need to start from scratch, you know, updating everything from their photo, profile photo, to the banner, to their headline, and the about section. And and it should the about section. Most people, you know, who are not um, active or who are who don't know how to optimize it, they have it like a resume, you know, uh, successfully created so and so, mm -hmm. successfully. But it is it's a um, LinkedIn is a place where you can show who you are 
but in a in a business manner, in a not not like um, you know, not like Instagram, but professional manner. But also say, you know, I'm a real person like you are, and this is how I can help you. You know, in my career or in my business, I can help you with ABC. And so once I, I optimize their profile, I also create content that speaks to their ideal client. And uh, I'm glad, uh, help, mm, Sally, I'm glad that you mentioned that, um, you know, people have, um, you know, they, they don't go back to their profile. They need to uh, socialize and engage and with different content. And some people say, well, I'm not looking for a job right now. I'm happy with my job. But you need to start planting seeds of, um, yes, you know, seeds that will germinate. And when you really need a new job, you already planted those seeds of relationships, connections, and content content that show that you can write content that show that you can you know you have a voice that you have that you are um, pro something you know pro life or pro something right like you could be pro just you know travel you could be pro you know incorporating what you do in your life into um into communication with people in your business you think about this when you go to a chamber of commerce meeting and you're trying to meet people in town, what's the first thing that you say? You may say, hi, my name is so-and-so, and this is what I do for a living, but where did you go on vacation last? That's probably one of the things you talk about. Where'd you go to college? What's going on Bye. with the sports team? What's going on with, hey, where do you go work out? Do you do hot yoga? Oh, I love hot yoga. Let's go, you know, over to this, whatever. And when you incorporate just some of those details into your content and into your life, it attracts other people and makes them remember you. Yeah, it makes them think that you're just as human as they are. Exactly. So, Marilyn, did you have anything you wanted to pipe in on that? Um, I just, <laughs> i got to be honest. Gracie, as I'm hearing you talk about these people who don't update their LinkedIn profile, I am super guilty of that. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I've, I've tried to update it, but I just feel socially awkward. And, Sally, when you talk about when you go to a chamber of commerce and you're networking, I feel more comfortable standing by the coffee or the punch bowl. I just, I feel super awkward. Like, well, what do I, what do I say? How do I, I don't want to put anybody off. I don't want to say anything politically incorrect. You know, I have a lot of passions and I feel super passionate about things and I want to make sure that I, I don't offend anybody. So how do you, how do you stand for something? LinkedIn is so business forward. Mm -hmm. how, how do you filter yourself so that you do it in a way that stands for what you stand for, but isn't polarizing, I guess? When it comes to talking about controversial things or, or content that's disruptive to the homogenous conversation and the easy conversation that you feel like you need to have, there's a way to be soft and not aggressive yet firm in your beliefs and be respected for it. So really yeah. that's more about understanding how to be an emotionally intelligent leader. And I think okay. that if you look at things from that type of perspective without trying to offend people, still listening to their perspective and understanding, it's not like you have to get into the deep, dark conversation that happens, you know, <laughs> underneath, you know, all the other layers but people need to be able to have these conversations with each, with, with each other because it's extending into our lives and our relationships and into our conflicts with people. With all of the unrest over the last few years with, you know, politics and with COVID and all of the ridiculousness of, you know, misinformation and uh, polarizing viewpoints, people are not paying attention 
that like 80% of people are really only one or two steps across the aisle from you. They're not really like 10 degrees away in thinking. Uh -huh. And we're missing that there's a huge shade of gray in the middle that, that we're uh -huh. not addressing. And everybody is literally fighting from the extreme viewpoints. And that is something that's got to stop. And we have to be able to come together and meet at the same table. And so we have to understand and learn how to do that. And if we can be emotionally intelligent in the way we put forth our opinions, people will respect us for that. Uh -huh. And here's the other thing that I think of when it comes to work. If you work in a corporation and you hate your job because you're not being heard, you're not being listened to, the culture is toxic, uh, you know, things like that. Does it really serve you to stay in that vein? Or does it serve you to take a stand somehow, put yourself out there so that you naturally flow towards the actual career you want and need? Mm -hmm. Yep. I, I agree with you on that. I just feel like I should update after hearing Gracie talk I feel like I should go and update my LinkedIn profile and I don't even know how to create a banner Gracie <laughs> oh I can I can help you with that Gracie's amazing <laughs> you should definitely connect after this and uh oh, yeah. get going Thank in that you, direction Sally. because and Gracie Marilyn's a great person to know because she is a, a coach who helps women in their careers to get noticed and to do the things that they really need to do to advance what's happening in their uh, careers and in their lives. And to oh. pay attention to the fact that women are different. We don't yeah. we operate the same way that men do. So I think it's really important to acknowledge that and to bring that out. Right, right. Oh, I'm, I'm happy to connect with Marilyn. Cool. That'd be great. Thanks, yeah. Gracie. I think um, mm -hmm. I'm good on the, uh, on the uh, like you talk about, Sally, going off the nice wood chip path, you mm -hmm. know, and digging into a little bit of the forest. I don't uh, probably talk about it as much on social as uh, maybe I could, but I'll, I'll, I will say this, the women that I've worked with even in the last two years, every single one of them has gotten promoted. That's so cool. That's great. But you and know we, what? Go what? ahead. Well, we just, you know, I am from the South originally. I'm from Memphis. And my granny was a big biscuit maker. <laughs> And she taught me, you know, you, you put all the things together and you, and you mix them up on the counter in a big, like a volcano. That's how I learned to make biscuits. And you put them all together in a pan. And I never realized this until I was much older. She cooked them in a cast iron skillet. Well, if you've ever seen a cast iron skillet, it's, you know, they're not huge. All the biscuits touch in the skillet. And they would be like, you know, two, three inches high, she made the best biscuits. And a couple of times I would make them at home. I didn't have a cast iron skillet. I do now, but they wouldn't rise as big as hers. When I got the cast iron skillet and I put them all in there together, they would rise like hers. And someone told me recently, it's because when they're all touching, they help each other rise. Aww. You separate them all out and they don't. They just stay small. I believe the same thing in the workplace. If we can gather around women and create a community, we help each other rise. Right. I agree. I love that analogy. And, and that's right there, Marilyn, to be honest with you. Take the audio clip of that and make it into a story that goes on your social media. Okay, yeah, now, Sally, but, you know I don't know how to do that. You're going to have to show me how to do that. Well, I, I know how to do that. I can't <laughs> help you with that. <laughs> Thanks, Gracie. You know, we'll, we'll so figure I'm this out. I'm good behind the scenes. I'm, I'm not on the tech side, but uh, I, I'm just a big believer in supporting each other and 
being a huge advocate for women and reaching back and forward and to the side. And if I can connect somebody, Mm -hmm. I'm a big believer in connecting them. If I see something that I'm like, hey, I don't know if you know this, but I got married in December to the most amazing guy ever. And five years ago, I hired a dating coach. Not a coincidence. Oh, 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 Bella. Yes, Bella. Exactly. And we've become really good friends over the years, but I paid her. I said, I do not want to, I don't want your help as a friend. I want to pay you as my coach. Tell me what to do. And she fundamentally changed the way that I looked at how I was approaching dating. And that rippled out into my whole work response, ethic, confidence. And I started asking for more at work. And I started looking at how can I work in my zone of genius? How can I show up and be of service? How can I help other people do that? And that that has been just a huge shift in my whole life by having a coach who could speak some truth into my life and say, hey, maybe think about looking at the way you're approaching this problem in a way that only you can solve it. And that's how women look at things. Mm -hmm. And that ripple effect, while it was only for dating, it it changed my work. It changed my household. I bought my first house by myself three years ago. It, It was a ripple effect in my community. That's why I focus solely on women, because I think that's where we change our legacy, that's where we change our history, and and that's how we change our community. You support one woman, Mm -hmm. it's really like supporting a hundred women. Yeah, well, and supporting an entire family, supporting an entire department, supporting, you know what I mean? Like, women tend to be the precipitate, the foundation, the seed that lets everything else grow, and... Uh The, the nice thing about how women approach problems is that we tend to dig to the heart of it. We dig out the poison. We're the ones uh-huh. that get in there and dig out the poison. I mean, we really do. Because we know that the Band-Aids don't work. Not for long. No. No, they no. don't. And we have to stop, you know... The quick, raw, you know, the quick solutions that don't really fix the problem. And because our society and our, you know, companies and and everything, just the whole world right now, I think, is exploding with the poison. Yeah. I think you're right. And and in my nine-to-five job, when you talk about... You know, do you work for a company that you hate or that you believe in? Mm -hmm. One of the reasons why I keep my nine to five job, I love coaching. Don't get me wrong. I'm I'm a great coach and I love to do that on the side. But my, the corporation that I work for has so many initiatives that they have launched. And one of them is how do we reduce our carbon footprint in a generation? In a generation. Yeah. Not in a minute. It's No. But what they're looking at is how do we create sustainable farms? How do we help women in South Africa have their own business? You know, we, we, there's so many amazing initiatives that I see our company using their resources to impact the world in a positive way. I, I love where I work. Uh, and, and I think I have the best job in the world. I, it's a win-win. But there, it's just, I want to also help women and champion women. And so I do that mm-hmm. in my nine to five. But there's so many women who who need that help. And just one person telling you, you can do this. is sometimes all you need. What is your position? I know where you work, but we, we don't have to mention that if you don't want to. But what is your position, actually? I'm senior manager in a marketing department. Okay. For global global marketing. So uh, if, I do 
the, and so you yeah, work you go with ahead, clients so. or, or whatever, you're doing the global marketing or you're working with vendors or what's the... Um, so I was, for the last three years, I did a lot of MarTech. So I created a marketing portal that connected not only my segment globally, but all three segments globally. Mm -hmm. No one had ever done that before. And so now you have a one-stop shop for all your marketing needs. So your branding, your, your brand books, um, what's currently happening in the marketing world, what's happening both internally and how do we, how do we connect the dots so that we show up seamlessly around the globe? That it was always a black box. What people did in the U.S. was completely hidden from what people did in Russia. Not intentionally, but just because people are so focused on their segment and in their world. Now you have the opportunity to be able to see best in class what worked and what didn't work. And that set us up for now we're becoming more of an innovation. How do we think of innovation in terms of, you think of Google, right? And they say, what is it, 60% of your job is the day-to-day, 40% we want you to create something. How do you create an internal shift in mindset where it's safe to fail? And it's fascinating as you start to fail because that may, that that means that you tried something. You don't see a lot of companies making that shift. You see a lot of the the tech companies doing that, but an established company who mm-hmm. believes enough in the value of their employees to let them try new things, to let them explore, to let their personality come through to let their voice be heard yeah it's it's the best place in the world i I just the culture is amazing it's just amazing marilyn i can see why you you love this job (laughs) i I love it and the the people i work with are just they're so smart and they are in my opinion every single person i work with is best in class and we all show up our best selves. How do we support each other? How do we bring what we love to do to the table and then make it work with what everybody else loves to do? And, you know, it gives you so much freedom because maybe the thing that you don't really love to do, you don't have to. Exactly. And that's what I, I that's agree. What I, love. I agree with that as well. And the fact that you're even talking about this and you're doing this in your career really inspires me to realize that your company could be forefront in yeah. the change of what's happening around the world. And if do you help women even in your own company with this? Because it feels like you actually could create your own responsibility within the company to be the one that develops the women in your business. Or in your we do we do have quite a bit of development opportunities for sure um, and you know I of course if somebody asks me to mentor them at work I, I'm all about that but I try to keep my what I do in my nine to five and what I do in my side hustle as a coach pretty separate and I'm okay with that there's there's a lot of women in the world that don't work where I work and yeah and I think that's okay yeah. I just, I just wonder, like, that could be a position within a company to be the one that creates that within your own corporation, even if you do it on the side as well. I'm just saying, like, you know, the way that, that I think about things when it comes to being an entrepreneur is, okay, I want to be a speaker and I want to do this that and the other and so what I do is is I go and I create my own little profile of who I want to be and when I state that and make it public and known that this is what I am I grow into it very quickly 
I love that, Sally. You're such a great visionary for stuff like that. Yes, she is. And I love how you put that together, um, Sally. I think I'm going to um, copy that <laughs> and take it. <laughs> well, imagine doing that in your in your own job, if you will, and saying, uh-huh. this is what I want to do in my career. So when I put up my LinkedIn profile or my social media... I am going to describe what who I am and what I do the way I want it to be. Uh-huh. Because if you put that idealistic visionary piece out there and you say that about yourself, you will start to create content around that idea. And you will start to show up as that wherever you are. And I think that's going to get somebody promoted quicker than anything, right? If you're always yes. pushing in that direction. Uh-huh. Right. And, and, I... Yeah, and then you use the other social media to connect on the outside. But, and I don't want to necessarily get into, oh, this is what you need to do when it comes to social media necessarily. But I know there's another way to, if you get people over on Instagram or on Facebook, and then you want to put something out there and literally stick a dollar a day behind it and carefully craft the audience you're sending it to, your reputation will explode in a good yeah. direction. Uh huh. That's cool. Man, Marilyn, like that. Sally's uh-huh. smart at this, so she knows what she's telling you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm aware, Gracie. I'm aware. <laughs> All right, well, totally listen, agree with you on that. We've uh, we've gone uh, quite a while on this, and I'd I'd love to be able to connect again at some point. But I want to wrap this up, and if you've got any parting thoughts before we do that, let's uh, let's go into that now. How would you like to? Um, wrap up this type of conversation? Yeah, it's a great question. I I think going back to the topic on how do you get noticed, uh, and, and like I had mentioned, one of my secret gifts is helping women get promoted. You know, several clients have come to me in the last year and, and said, oh, I'm ready for a promotion, and what do I need to do? It's not it's not quite that easy, but it's not quite as hard as you as you might have thought it used to be. So one of the ways that I have coached my clients to get noticed and promoted is to start secretly doing the work of what you want to be promoted to. So let's say you're a director now and you want to be promoted to vice president. How do you start building a road towards that? There's a lot of different ways to do it, but one of the ways that I've really seen is showing up like a leader. And if you don't know how to show up like a leader, look at someone that you work with. How do they show up? How do they speak? How do they dress? How do they walk? And and think about, oh, that's how I want to show up. That's how I that's the kind of leadership style that I really like. If there isn't someone that you can look up to, Start practicing it yourself. This is how I want to show up. This is how I want to be known. Because people don't necessarily remember what you said at the last meeting. What is the famous line? They remember how you made them feel. Yeah, the Maya and did they Angelou, feel heard? Maya Angelou quote. Yes. Mm-hmm. And did, did they feel heard? And did they feel like you really listened to them? And that has been a huge game shifter. I used to always want to be the one in the room who had the right answer. And I wanted to be the smartest person in the room. But what I quickly realized was if if I was the smartest person in the room, I wasn't learning anything. So how could I level that up? So I started hanging out with different people. Like you, Sally, and now you, Gracie. And mm-hmm. you guys will elevate me to a different level on social and on LinkedIn because I will learn from you. And so as I started to help my clients navigate that, I also said, now when you go have a one-on-one, either with your boss, your manager, or someone else, tell them three things that you learned that week. Tell them three things that you're working on. Whether it's a success or whether it failed, 
so that you can start building your credibility around skill set building. That's what starts to get you noticed because not a lot of people are working on themselves or their skill set or Mm -hmm. their, you know, next job. And by doing that for six months, you will have been feeding them what you've been doing. By the time you get to the end of six months, it's a no brainer. If you ask for a promotion, whether they say yes or no, the fact that you asked plants the seed even if you're not ready yet, you can use that and say, tell me what it needs to happen. Tell me what I need to think through. Tell me what I need to change to get ready for that promotion. And then if I work towards that, will I get that promotion in the next six months? And I want to take And that- asking. Asking what? That's the biggest thing. Asking for the opportunity. Okay, I'm going to do this. And in six months... Will I be there? And continuing the conversation. What I find is many women, they never ask. Maybe they don't even do the work, but they expect to get the promotion because they're working hard. But nobody around them knew it. So you have to make what you want known. And then ask for what you want, right? And then do the work that you're told to do to get there. And then if you don't get the promotion and you felt like you've done all the work, You've exhausted that avenue, and then maybe they come to you, Gracie, to help update their LinkedIn profile, right? (laughs) Right, right. Even beyond that, Marilyn, if you want to get even noticed within your company, and let's say you don't necessarily have that opportunity because you weren't invited to that meeting or you only got to tell two or three people that day, instead of having to wait for it, why not create an article or an editorial or something that talks about what you learned when you did Toastmasters or what you learned on a particular project that you worked on without giving away company secrets or anything proprietary like that. Literally talk about the personal development and the the self-learning that you did the personal, you know, um, well, the professional development or whatever, bring that out and talk about it on LinkedIn in posts and in articles that live on your profile so that you can also tag people you work with. And they will get the notification and they will see you. Right. And another thing that I would add, I love what you, Marilyn and Sally said, but another thing that I would add is that don't overthink it. A lot of people don't do any of the writing or posting or engaging because they're overthinking. Uh, What if I say something wrong? What if they're going to judge me? What if so-and-so is going to see me? Don't overthink it. Just do it. I love that you say that, Gracie. I'm reading John Acuff's book right now called Soundtracks. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what he says. If you're overthinking something, Get up and go to the grocery store and buy one thing and then come back and start again because you're overthinking it. And and do an interrupter so that you stop doing that. I love that. Just take some action. Yeah. That's good. That's good advice. I tell people I've got a friend or actually a family member who who was a big time overthinker. I'm a big time overthinker. And I'm like, hold on a second. You're projecting seven chess moves ahead. Could you just make the first move and see what happens? And he's like, oh, yeah. And I'm like, because what's happening seven chess moves down the road is so far away from where you are right now. And you can always take another right or do another curve or whatever to get back on track. (laughs) Did you watch The Queen's Gambit, Sally? No. Oh, you would like that. It's on Netflix. Cool. Okay. I'll have to look that up. All right, well, ladies, yeah. let's wrap this up. And um, I, my name is Sally Hendrick. You can look at my profile and find me that way. Marilyn Dollar here. Marilyn Dollar, uh, you can look her up, find her that way. And Gracie, um, what's your last name? Is it Mel- Melendez. Melendez. Melendez? Melendez. Because Gracie goes by Gracie Ruth in some areas and Gracie Melendez in others. And so I usually forget um, what that is. But also look up Gracie. She can definitely help you with 
turning that profile around on LinkedIn or, you know, some advice on what to do there. And that's it for today. So thank you, ladies, for coming. Thank you for listening today. Now head over to sallyhendrick.com forward slash clubhouse to participate in our live and recorded event. Thanks for being here.